Yeah, they are cutting timber. What's going on guys? My name is Daniel and you're watching Triple R Farms and uh, I'm going to give you a quick introduction of kind of what our farm is about. If you're new to the channel, this is for y'all, but uh, we are located in central Alabama and uh, we're a fourth generation farm. We mainly grow row crops. We're a wheat, uh, corn, soybean, and cotton farm. We have grown peanuts in the past. And on our channel, uh, I do all the filming and all the editing. I do everything. One man show. And uh, our videos are kind of what goes on in one day at Triple R Farm. So every episode or video is going to be what went on that day. And I try to keep it interesting. And if it's not, we won't put it on the channel. But um, right now, in December 17th, we have harvested all our crops. So we're done harvesting. So at this time of year we typically are uh, doing a lot of shop work we're going through getting anything ready that we need to get ready for 2022 season uh, that's repairing tractors uh, just anything irrigations you name it we'll be doing it every day because we're getting ready for the next season and here comes the weather this is our wet season uh, this is when we typically get a lot of rain fields stay wet um, but we will get out there. We have a lot of tillage work that we need to do. And um, anyway, when it, when it dries up, we'll be out there in the fields with the tractors and stuff plowing. So right now, unfortunately, we're stuck in the shop doing work, but we will be out there getting in the fields. And when we do that, I always have drone shots. We have a lot of aerial footage I do on our channel. That's a little background on us. Now, I'm gonna tell you what we got going on today, if you're still watching. Today, we uh, James is going to change oil on this tractor right here, 8320. It is due for an oil change. Uh, the augers that I've been working on uh, in the last video, we may put one of those pipe up that's going to hold an auger. I'm not sure if we're going to do that or not, but I know we are going to, um, on our CP690, our cotton picker, we have got two hydraulic um, cylinders that are leaking fluid by they're going to have to be taken off one is on the basket that lets up the accumulator it's going to be really hard to do that one and then we got the one on the header that lifts up the header we got to get it off we've got seal kits for it so we're going to have to send that off and get them fixed but uh i know we're going to be taking those off today what else we get into y'all will find out but um anyway let's get this video started i'm tired of talking <laughs> first thing James is gonna go haul a load of hay and uh, then he's gonna come back and change it so I can cut the tractor off Lord it's already off what is going on what in the world Well, that is strange. We'll just cut it off, let everything reboot down, and then we'll try it again. Even though we're not going to change oil, I just want to make sure it'll crank. Something wasn't communicating with each other or something, and it shut itself off, so hopefully that will not be an issue. Okay. Another thing on the cotton picker. Before we can do the hydraulic cylinders and all, of course, we have more battery trouble. So uh, I think PA, I see him, he is uh, getting the battery charger out and uh, we're gonna see if we can crank that thing up, get it jumped off. All right, settle down. That didn't sound good. 
It cut off again. Huh? It's doing this weird thing where it shut off. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It didn't sound like it was up. When I say, when I say up, yeah. The needle kept the banging when I turned the key. See, hurry, it's, hurry. It's cycles <laughs> in like 20 seconds. <laughs> Oh, wow, this thing keeps, it keeps cycling down like it is not charging right now. I don't know if y'all can see that through that glare. Definitely going to need some more charging. Third try. All right. <laughs> oh, boy. That's what that tailgate's for. Try number four. Good grief. Dad gets his new truck today. So that's what he's worried about. I think they're gonna have it ready this morning. He got his ready to go, got all the tools out. And uh, we will check it out when he gets here with it. Clean it up pretty good. No. Yeah. Try number five. Ah. 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 We got it. Took my truck, took a battery charger, and we had dad's truck. Three things. I like PA's jumper cables. They look good in my truck. One of the cylinders we got to take off, if you can see back in there. See that cylinder way back there? That's one of them. It lifts the heads up. The next one is up in here. Whew, goodness. I don't know how I'm going to get up in there. Holy cow, there's no way I can climb through there. I can't get by all those sensors. I can't crawl through there. That's the other cylinder right there. It holds the accumulator basket up, but we wanted it all the way down to get the pressure off, but boy, you can't hardly get in there. It's going to be tight. I'm afraid it's going to fall on down. I don't see anything stopping it. That's what I know. It's going gonna, it's gonna to mess up all them sensors. We got to tie it off somehow. There's not but one way. I I can't see the bottom. There's no way I can even bend my neck to look down. See, we you, between these tanks. I can't. The only way the only yeah. way is when it was up. You could lay down across that tank and you could get to that bottom. I don't think we can do it with it down. Uh, Golly. I'm afraid it's going to have to be up. We got a mess. Man, yeah, you got it. It's there's some clean out that's got to be done before you can even see how to unbolt the bottom. Yeah, I let say. Me call, let I me call Andy. Y'all work on getting that cylinder out. I say check out right, two let's, things. That we let's can. work on getting my batteries in my truck so I can go. And I'll call Andy. <laughs> Oh, I bet it won't crank. What we gotta do is, well, I'll explain it in a second. Ooh, got lucky. 
what PA is doing is rolling he's rolling the heads out before we let it down on the pallets so we'll have room to get up under here you can now have paths where you can walk through there to get to that cylinder okay here's what we got let me explain to you we got the one cylinder under the header we're gonna take that off right now we can get to that we can handle that but this basket cylinder right here is behind that pipe it is just too dangerous we think for us to get it off it's in there you have to squeeze through that hole and once we get the cylinder off we don't know if the basket's gonna come down even more even more and you get trapped in there you could brace it off with some some kind of iron you could put in here and brace it all to the floor but you'd have to do it all the way around on that side it gets really sketchy because you have no lip you got that little thin lip to brace it on anyway too dangerous basically for us to do i'm afraid if those braces fall and you're under there you're gonna get trapped and you're gonna get hurt really bad so this is going to be a call to Andy at John Deere at Sun South. He's going to have his crane, hook it to the top of the basket, hold it up, get the cylinder out, then he can let it down with his crane. He's done it plenty of times. Try to do it ourselves, save some money, but too dangerous. Come on, Andy. Probably 17. He's had plenty of 17. I don't know why. Look at there. 17. Bigger. Bigger? 19. 18. 18. Here is the cylinder right here. I don't know. Is that, that's got to come out. And she is leaking hydraulic oil. Um, this is what's going to be hard is tapping this out. It is going to be probably seized in there. We definitely need some Schaefer spray. We're going to have some buckets to catch all this oil. Schaefer uh, Penetro 90. Definitely have to be sprayed in there. We've got to take these lines loose. And then that pin will come out too. You don't want to get out, Lucy? You don't want to work? I'm good. I'm here with Daniel and PA. Um, we we got a leaking a, a cylinder that seeps down while he's running. We got everything off. This pin came out easy. It's right there. The pin holding the back of the cylinder, it's actually moving. I thought we were gonna have trouble with it. The only thing that's holding up this whole daggone project is that little bolt right there. That bolt right there that goes through there and holds the pin is rusted up. We cannot get it to budge. The one thing you didn't count on giving you trouble is giving us trouble. Must be Friday.
So we got the cylinder off that's on the header. Uh, that will be taken to um, be taken to Montgomery to be worked on. They're going to put a seal kit in there, and uh, then we'll put it back on. Thank goodness that worked out okay. The uh, cylinder on the basket, like I said, way too dangerous for us to do. We could we could do it, but it was going to be very dangerous, and I didn't want to put people in harm's way. So, handy. I think Dad talked to him, and he's going to have to repair that, and he'll hook his crane up. Anyway, he'll do it that way. I wanted to uh, come up here and show y'all how our weed is coming along. I have not seen it in a long time, and I know y'all haven't either. Looks like the rain is about to set in, so this is my one chance to show y'all. But this was planted with the grain drill. Um, this whole farm is at the graveyard, Tyler Graveyard is what we call it. And this is like my test plot. Uh, normally I do broadcast uh, wheat. We've done it for years, but we're going to do some grain drilled wheat. And um, unfortunately I don't have any broadcast in the same field as a grain drill. It just just did not work out. I mean, it was it was chaotic enough just getting it planted. So anyway, that's that's something maybe next year we can do, but at least we got some planted with the grain drill. So this is 3640 uh the variety and um I, we planted it ourselves. Lucy, we don't eat it. We don't eat the wheat eat the other weeds it's just hard for me to uh, guess what kind of plant stand we got i mean because i'm so used to looking at wheat that's broadcast it just looks totally different to me in my mind just walking across here looking at it in rows i just feel like it's not a good stand because you just see so many so many spots that are open in between the rows it's just it's very deceiving for me to be able to tell if this is a good stand count or not. Load up. Load up. What you got in there? Corn cob? I don't know if I told the planting date on that wheat, uh, just thinking about it. I think it was planted the week after Thanksgiving. So we went through Thanksgiving, we came back to work and we got on it that Monday. Uh, whatever date that is, but I'll, I'll double check and try to get a date, but Golly, they're already cutting timber out here All these pine trees They're about to take them all down Yeah, they are cutting timber But uh, you got all these trees right here all the ones behind me I mean, it's a lot, it's a lot of trees. And then there's another field uh, behind here that's got pines this tall. But uh, the mill was out of lumber and uh, I think they made a really good price on it. And uh, we took it. So they're about to cut on about three of our farms. They're gonna cut a lot of timber. So um, I got my drone with me. I didn't think I was gonna be able to get some drone footage today uh, cause it was too wet to plow. But uh, let's get some uh, let's get some timber footage.
Well guys, I guess this is gonna be the end of the video. Uh, it's just me and Lucy left here on the farm. Everybody else had plans to do this afternoon, which is understandable. Got Christmas next week. Everybody's got shopping to do, uh, family to visit and stuff like that. So um, anyway, we're gonna cut it short this Friday and this is gonna be the end of the video. Lucy had a good time. She did really good. Everybody's getting to see her for the first time, so maybe she'll be coming to make a couple more trips with us if Thomas lets her. Anyway, guys, you know what I'm about to say? See you on the next one, guys. We are out.